At this time, I'd like to invite Dr. Marek Wajayak to say a few words as well. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Marek Bozaga, I'm chair of the executive committee of the conference. I would like to give you some background information about this uh, conference. So, it's a grassroots initiative organized by a handful of people. We are private persons, not specialists in event management, so it was a huge task for us, um, resembling um, climbing uh, Mount Everest in winter, not, not, really, not really easy. But I think we succeeded. We had a lot of guests here. Tomorrow we'll have much more. And um, this conference was possible only thanks to the donations from uh, Poles, from private persons, from Polish Americans mainly, but also from some institutions. One of them uh, was the Polish Slavic Federal Credit Union, the biggest financial institution in the United States. Um, the Veco Travel, it is a travel agency, and in the Polish uh, chambers of Commerce and Industry in New Delhi. We have also uh, great support from Polonia Institute and also from organizations like Polish American um, Strategic Initiative. It is a new organization dealing with education and also some political lobbying in, in Washington, D.C. What are the conference goals? We have the 80th anniversary of the uh, outbreak of the Second World War. And we want to pay tribute to our fathers, mothers, our grandfathers, grandmothers who suffered or who fought on various fronts of the war against Nazi Germany and Soviet Russia. Another goal of this conference is to create a platform for networking. We have here a lot of guests from different countries. We have prominent speakers from India, from Germany, from Poland, from Great Britain, from Spain, of course, from the United States. And this conference should serve as a kind of platform paving the way for establishing new scientific contacts, some collaboration also in the film industry. So we encourage you to talk to each other and to, to start various cooperations in the future. Um, one of the important goals of the conference is also to expose some bias in the historical narrative about uh, Poland, Polish experience during World War II. Uh, we feel that we are treated unfairly by the media, by the academia and also by the politicians. Poland suffered horribly during the war. The country was attacked by Germany on September 1st, 1939, and seven days later by the Soviet Russia. The first goal of Nazi Germany was to annihilate the Polish intelligentsia. In the first two, three years of the war, the casualties on the Polish side among ethnic Poles were in proportion um, pro every 10 persons, nine were Polish, ethnic Polish citizens, and one a Jewish citizen. It changed after the Wannsee Conference in Berlin. The proportion was then uh, three to two, two Polish ethnic citizens and three ethnic Jewish citizens. The war cost the life of six million Polish citizens, amongst them three million Polish citizens of Jewish descent. We suffered huge material losses. A lot of people from the Polish elites uh, lost their life. And uh, after the Second World War, the country was occupied by Soviet Russia. Another 40 years of occupation followed. But today, the problem is that the history is distorted by the media, by academia, and also by politicians. Uh, you know, the problem of uh, the so-called Polish dead camps uh, in reference to the uh, Nazi German camps established in occupied Poland, but also in many other countries, which are unjustly called frequently by the world media Polish camps. The problem is that this changes significantly the perception of the role which Poland played during the war. Uh, I was a member of a group which is called Polish Media Issue, Issues Group, and uh, we carried out a survey in 2015 in Great Britain with over 2,000 respondents, and we found out that uh, the young generations have no idea who set up Auschwitz and who administered the camp. 19% 19, 19 of the young generation answered that it is Poland. It is Poles who are responsible for establishing Auschwitz and uh, managing the camp. So 
repeating again and again this uh, historically false and offensive term, Polish camps, leads to some changes in the perception, how Poland and Poles are perceived. And uh, this is the problem because Poles were the first victims of the Nazi and Soviet occupation. And uh, there are more and more cases that uh, Poles are perceived not as victims, but as perpetrators. I remember a case, my colleague visiting a college in California, asking a very simple question to, to the students. What do you think, who are Nazis? And the answer was, of most of the, of the students, it is Poles, so it is absolutely unacceptable. Poles were victims of Nazi Germany and of Soviet Russia, were not Nazis. So for this reason, amongst others, we organized this conference to make it clear that Poland was the victim of World War II and not the perpetrator. I can show you some examples here from, um, from the media on the left side. Uh, it is from CBS News uh, during the celebration of the anniversary um, of uh, liberation of the Auschwitz camp uh, in the last year. Um, CBS called Auschwitz a Polish dead camp. On the right side, um, it was the uh, Telegraph called also um, Auschwitz a Polish camp. Another Example here is Fox News, also Polish camp, Jewish, uh, Jewish voice, Polish Auschwitz, Birkenau, dead camp. There are at least 300, 350 such cases in the mainstream media every year, and it has a significant, imp significant impact on, on the perception of Poles. Here's another example, uh, just several days ago, in Daily Mail, the title of the article, Poland's notorious Stalag Luft tree in World War II camp. Stalag was located in Germany, and uh, Poles were prisoners of war in this camp. There was also a movie about this camp, Grand Escape. So it has nothing to do with Poland, in fact. Here's another example, uh, also several days ago, Netflix, a company offering streaming services, uh, film productions, uh, started with a new documentary about uh, John Demianuk, who was a guard at the Treblinka death camp, and a map showing contemporary Poland with uh, Nazi German camps on the map suggesting that these camps belonged to Poland. Um, it's led to uh, protests in the Polish media, also in the Polish government. Uh, Polish Prime Minister Morawiecki uh, sent a letter to the management of Netflix and asked for a correction. So on the right side, we have the, the correct map. It is totally un not understandable why such a company like Netflix is not able to, uh, to use a correct map. We are using maps in our life when, when we are wandering, so without any map we cannot reach our goal. So it is um, kind of subtle manipulation of public opinion, but it impacts also the perception of Poland. Here are correct maps. I visited the um, Holocaust Memorial and Museum in Washington several days ago and uh, made some photos of the maps and uh, you can see that the difference is, is uh, substantial. So on the left side, you have uh, Nazi Germany. On the right side, uh, Soviet Russia. There was no Poland. Poland was occupied. So you cannot <coughs> define the camps in terms uh, of Polish camps. And last but not least, what is the goal of this conference? You know, perhaps uh, an old proverb from the Middle East. A fool throws a stone into a well, and it requires a and hundred wise men to get it out again. Or in Polish, gdy jeden głupi wrzuci kamień do studni, to dziesięciu mądrych goni wodobędzie. One of the goals of, the, of this conference is to get out the stone from the well. Thank you very much.